In this lecture, we're going to graph a demand curve, graph a supply curve, and find the equilibrium. Then we're going to calculate the consumer surplus, producer surplus, total revenue, variable costs, and then we are going to see what happens if the government interferes in the market with something like a price floor or a price ceiling or a production quota and then we can calculate the deadweight loss and so we have a lot of things I'm going to do in a series of YouTube videos here so let's get started the demand and supply equations I want to graph are right here P equals 12 minus 2 thirds Q so the y-intercept is 12 and the slope is minus 2 thirds so this demand curve and then the supply curve will be P equals 2 plus Q uh, y-intercept of 2 and a slope of 1. And so let me start drawing these in. So y-intercept of 12 for the uh, demand curve here. And then down to over 3 we could go uh, rise over and down 2 over 3, down 2 over 3 and we could keep doing that. Or what I like to do many times is set the price equal to zero. So the y-intercept is when the quantity equals zero. But if we set the price equal to zero, that will put us down here on the x-axis. And then we can solve for the quantity. And that would give us 12 equals 2 thirds Q. So if we divide both sides by minus 2 thirds, uh, sorry, by positive 2 thirds, 12 divided by 2 thirds, will give us 18 as the y-intercept, sorry, x-intercept down here on the x-axis. And so let me, as, as straight as I can try, uh, let me, I better go down 2 over 3 and just give myself some points to um, gauge my line here because I want to make the, sure this line is as accurate as possible. And on the screen, I can't use a ruler. Uh, so let me see, I'll give myself some targets here to try to do this a little more accurately. Okay, down 2 over 3 and down 2 over 3. Let me reduce my brush size here a little bit. That's a little crazy out of control. Okay, so going down 2 over 3, that's what we end up with. And then let's graph the supply curve. And so we're going to start at y equals 2 and go up at a slope of 1. And so let me start here and try to get that as straight as I can possibly go with the mouse. So we have our supply curve and we have our demand curve down here. Sorry those aren't too straight, but you can get the idea. So when after we've graphed these curves, if you've graphed them straight, then you can look to see where the supply and the demand curve equal. And it looks to be here like the price will be about 8 and the quantity will be about 6. And if your curves aren't drawn very straight, then you need to verify that by solving these two equations, setting them equal to each other, and solving to verify that that's what your equilibrium price and quantity R. So let's do that to make sure. Okay, I paused it and redrew those lines so that they looked a little bit better there. And so let's solve these two equations and let me open up words so that we can see how that would work. Okay, if you have a demand function like this and then you have a supply function written this way, P equals 2 plus Q, then it's very easy in economics to solve these two equations for the two unknowns. All you have to do is if P equals this and also P equals this, 2 plus Q, then you know that those two right hand sides of these equations equal each other at the equilibrium. So we have 12 minus 2 thirds Q equals 2 plus Q and if you wanted to solve this, the first thing I would probably do is subtract 2 from both sides to remove this 2 from the right hand side. So we'd have 12 minus 2 
minus 2 thirds Q equals 2 plus Q minus 2. And so those 2's on the right hand side will cancel and we will end up with 10, 12 minus 2, minus 2 thirds Q equals Q on the right hand side. And now to get the Q's all on one side, you might want to add 2 thirds Q to both sides. So plus 2 thirds Q on the left and plus 2 thirds Q on the right. And we're going to end up with 10 equals 1 Q plus 2 thirds Q is 1 and 2 thirds Q. Or we can rewrite that as 5 thirds Q. So 10 equals 5 thirds times Q. And if you divide both sides by 5 thirds, then we can divide 10 by 5 thirds. So 10 divided by uh, 5 divided by 3 is going to give 6. So if you solve this, Q equals 6. And that's what we have on our graph here, that Q equals 6. But we want to double check and make sure that the equilibrium price is 8 here also. And in order to do that, just plug Q equals 6 back into either equation, either the demand or the supply, whichever looks easiest. And to me, the supply looks easier because all we have to do is take the Q, 6, and add to and verify that yes indeed the price the equilibrium price is 8. Now you may be wondering why are we doing this? Is, is, can't we just see that that's 8? Well you can see that it's somewhere near 8 but it might not be exactly 8. A lot of times the equilibrium will not be right on a nice even number like that. So now that we've found the equilibrium uh, we need we can start calculating some of these measures that are important in a market measure things like consumer surplus, total revenue, total benefit, etc. And so the first thing I like to start off with is total revenue and total revenue is the price times the quantity and when I do this I like to draw a box where it is and so let me draw a line, a blue line here where the equilibrium price is and then draw a blue line down to the equilibrium quantity. I'm just going to keep drawing this entire blue box here because that rectangle, think about the area of a rectangle, base times height or length times width. So if we have base of 6 times height of 8, the total revenue is 48. So let me write that over here, total revenue equals 48 and I apologize for my bad mouse writing here. So think about that as the area of this box because we could count up the individual squares and we would get 48 of them, $48 in total revenue. Now above the total revenue box here, below the demand curve and above the total revenue is where we find the consumer surplus and the consumer surplus let me highlight that here I'll highlight this in uh, yellow and just kind of shade that in now that yellow triangle right here is going to be the consumer surplus and so let's calculate the area of the triangle with one half times base times height so that triangle the base is 6 the same as the quantity and the height goes from 8 to 12. So 12 minus 8 is 4, that's the height. So the area of the triangle, which is the consumer surplus, is 1 half times 6 times 4. 6 times 4 is 24. And so our consumer surplus is equal to $12. Now, what is consumer surplus? Consumer surplus is best understood if we first calculate, uh, add. let's add these two together. The blue box on the bottom and the consumer surplus on the top. 
So if, if, if we add those two together, we get $60, and that's what we call the total benefit. So let me change colors here again and uh, write that down, that if you add these total revenue and consumer surplus, you get what's called the total benefit, TB equals $60. Now, what does that mean? Since the demand curve is what we think about as being marginal benefit, we measure benefits in economics by how much you're willing to give up in order to get something. The demand tells us the marginal benefit or how much you're willing to pay for each unit, the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. If we add how much you're willing to give up for each of those units and add them all together, we get the total amount you'd be willing to pay for all six units the most you'd be willing to pay to get all six. And it's easier to understand consumer surplus if you first think about what total benefit means. And we'll pick up in the second lecture and talk about this more.